This video is on assessment and evaluation strategies. Well, previously, we talked quite a bit about creating multiple choice tests. Now we're going to focus on other assessment strategies. And so first we have case scenarios. Now there are many different types and the first is the caselet. Often these are just a few sentences, very, very brief. Case studies are often one, two, maybe even three paragraphs and it also contain patient data. Now the unfolding case study is one that evolves over time in a manner that's unpredictable to the learner. And then new situations develop and they're revealed with each encounter and patient data again is presented for the learner to analyze. Now there are many different games that can be used for learning. We have the escape room, Jeopardy, Kahoot, Family Feud, and crossword puzzles. These also can be used for the learner to be assessed. And then we have the gallery walk. Well, this is a technique that involves discussion in which students are allowed to leave their chairs and get involved in a discussion, writing and synthesizing substantial concepts. It also helps to foster listening, speaking, and team spirit. Each station displays educational materials as either posters, bulletin boards, flashcards, or pamphlets based on the objective for the topic and then students can help in the preparation of the materials which can be reviewed by the instructor before the actual display. Using debriefing to review the learned concepts afterwards provides a platform for students to recollect and organize what they've learned. Next we have presentations and of course here the learner is in front of the class and they present either a particular topic or maybe a case to the other learners. Interviews, these can be used in varied ways. Um, students can interview a leader for instance in nursing or they can do a community based interview or interview a patient. Concept mapping. This is designed to show relationships between ideas and how they relate to the main idea. And so the technique really emphasizes the arrangement and rearrangement of sticky notes if you're doing this in a classroom or large surface or on a computer by using a template. And so let me show you an example. This is done using Poplet and the link to Poplet in general is down in the right hand corner. But this is showing a concept map that was created with that tool and it's on heart failure. Now students can also create their own infographics and they can create them for the purpose of patient education or patient care update, creating a timeline or they can also create their own resume. Now problem-based projects, or it's also called problem-based learning, well rather than teaching relevant material and subsequently having students apply that knowledge to then solve problems, the problem is presented first. And so the learners learn from the problem. The PBL, as it's called, assignments can be short or they can be more involved and they can take uh, a whole quarter or semester to complete. It is often done as a group project. Now you want to set the stage for group work if you want to have group work in your course. So you want to begin with reasonable workload. You want to chunk the project maybe over the term. Have a kickoff activity for group brainstorming. Create a discussion board for the members to select one another. Uh, set up groups in the learning management system. Uh, suggest uh, the literature suggests three to four in each group, no more. Have students name a group leader to keep everyone on task and then check in with the groups periodically as the faculty to assist them with their collaborative projects. Have a peer evaluation as part of that grade at the end and make sure that you provide clear directions for the project. Now the debate can be done again in class. It can also uh, be done online. Discussions. Again, these can be done face to face or they can be text based using a discussion form online 
or using a video discussion form such as Flipgrid. Now I've mentioned Flipgrid, which is a video discussion form, and of course you can also use it uh, to have your learners watch a video, for instance, and then state, well, what would you do in this case? This is just showing a video on clinical performance, but I've also done this um, with ethical issues in uh, the uh, research course. Also collaborative annotation. Now this is where you have an article and these are the two different tools that can be used, either hypothesis or perusal. There are several more. These are the more common ones. And then learners highlight a piece of text and then what they do is they talk about it. They speak to that text. It really gets your learner involved in an article that they may be reading. Reflection journals, very important as we remember uh, what Schoen, Donald Schoen said, it's reflection in and then reflection on. And Dewey said it's really by reflection that our learners learn. And then essays, these are short pieces of writing that are free form and their response usually to an open uh, question. These often get to the higher order thinking for your learner. And then papers, more in depth than that essay, and it, it is often done in an area of interest, either for the student or for the course, signed as homework, demonstrates critical thinking again, and also demonstrates the writing skills of your learner, which is often very important. You can use it for the purpose of helping them to develop their skill of argumentation, and it can demonstrate synthesis of ideas. Now portfolios, they're collections of student work. They can be kept either in a binder that is a paper binder or electronically. There are various different softwares to do so. They can help to give evidence of their progress either just during a course or throughout their entire program. This can help to show their identified strengths, weaknesses. You have them actually journal as part of the portfolio. can be used for them going for a position. Now role play. Students can actively participate in a situation. It helps to stimulate creativity and what you want to do is you do want to give them a particular role. You want to control the variables but you want to give them practice in this peer review for the skills. So you want the learners to critique how the role play was played out. Oral questioning, well this again, this gives evidence of your thinking process of the learners with the why questions, evidence of their verbal skills, opportunity for them to receive immediate feedback. There's the think pair share where you have a situation or you ask questions, you have the individual think, then you have them pair up with another student to think about it and then they share their responses with the entire group. Critiques, an opportunity for self-assessment first but also it encourages your students to form connections within and between the content. It's an integration of learning that can be demonstrated and learners can always benefit from getting a critique from another student. Students will also learn the course content by giving that critique. Student generated test questions. This is always a fantastic thing to do. Divide the class into groups and let them create test questions and then give them some selected test questions um, on an actual test and you may have to of course buff those questions, put them in a good format, uh, but I think this also helps them one to get into that course content and two to learn how difficult it is to write a test question as a faculty. Now classroom opinion polls, um, you can do these using Kahoot um, and when you use many of these polls they can be done on the computer or they can be done on smartphones using a mobile app. And so there's Poll Everywhere, Mentimeter, Kahoot, Socrative. I have Kahoot Jumble down here. This is a great one if you want to pose a question where learners have to prioritize what they would do first, second, third, etc. in a patient scenario 
or how they would put the steps in place for, for example, suctioning or inserting a catheter. Then you have the ticket in, ticket out, or what's also called an exit slash admit ticket. These tickets are done at the very beginning of class and students can respond to questions about their homework or on the lesson taught the day before. This can be an assignment expected to be completed prior to the class. They have to hand it in. That's their admission into class. The exit are small pieces of paper or index cards that they submit as they leave the class and students are required to write down an accurate interpretation of the main idea behind the lesson that was taught that day and then provide more detail about the topic. Now skill practice of course in a skill lab and then of course the clinical day and often what we do and we'll be talking about this later is evaluate student performance against clinical objectives that are based on the course objectives and then simulation of course with debriefing afterwards and then there's classroom assessment techniques. Uh, these are also called CATS. Uh, they're both a teaching approach and also a set of techniques. The approach is that the more you know about what and how students are learning, the better you can plan the learning activities for your students. These are simple, they're non-graded, they're anonymous and they're usually in-class activities. These are based on a book that is from the late 1990s by Thomas Angelo and Patricia Cross called Classroom Assessment Techniques, a handbook for college teachers. And characteristics of CATS is that they're formative, they're learner-centered, teacher-directed, and mutually benefit. Uh, beneficial, uh, context specific, ongoing, and grounded in good teaching practices. Why? And it says, why should I use uh, COTS? Well, as the faculty, they provide you with feedback as to are your learners understanding the teaching that you are providing? And then for students, it helps them to become better monitors of their own learning. It helps them uh, to point out maybe what they need to study more and concrete evidence for the instructor, okay, that they care about their learning. An example is the minute paper, and I will allow you to read how to do some of these. And here's an example of what a minute paper looks like. The muddiest point. If you're having a live session with your learners, you can use the chat box at the end of class for the muddiest point. The five minute professor. I love doing this one. This is where the student asks the question, but you have the student answer. Application cards. The one sentence summary, you can have them do it loosely as a sentence or you can provide them with a format. Then there's the classroom test. Many different types of items that can be used. If you have any questions, please place them in the course question area.